And ladies and gentlemen, we are just three days away from our signature event. It's Bound for Glory. It's the biggest pay-per-view of 2011. It's live from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Join us this Sunday. New knockout champion winner makes her first title defense against the three winners of the Queen's qualifiers, Velvet Sky, Mickey James, and Madison Rain in a four-way match. Well, once an extremely high-octane rivalry, while this comes to life again, Jerry Lynn basically said he's sick of being in Van Damme's shadow, so now the two will battle in full metal mayhem. Ladders, chairs, tables, legal. Oh, you know what, Mike? Buckle up. Newly crowned X Division champion Austin Aries puts his title on the line for the first time against former champ and number one contender, the Wizard of Odd, Brian Kendrick. Well, I gotta say, I got a funny feeling that these two teams right here, they're gonna beat the living snot out of each other this Sunday. And how about Ink Ink Mike having an equalizer for the females of Mexican America? We might crown new tag team champs this Sunday. Also this Sunday, Immortals Bully Ray and Mr. Anderson, they're going to be turned loose in an anything goes, falls count anywhere fight. Best friends, members of fortune, a brotherhood, all gone now. Now AJ Styles and Daniels, they find themselves in a match that historically has been extremely nasty. You win by making your opponent say, I quit. And Sting finally gets the fight that he's been waiting for for years against Hulk Hogan. Remember, if Sting wins, Hogan hands over the company to the icon. Well, Bobby Roode has been on fire as of late, which poses the question, is this Bobby Roode's time? Can Roode dethrone the almighty, highly decorated champion named Kurt Angle? We're going to find out this Sunday in Philly. Hello there, this is the Shadow Ranger, and this is my predictions for Bound for Glory 2011 from Impact Wrestling. Wow, this pay-per-view has been a long time in the making, with storylines, some angles that have been going on for months, some that have gone on for most of the year, some that have been going on since last year. A lot of stuff culminating at this pay-per-view, and you know, with all the stories, News reports about, uh, you know, Bruce Pritchard taking over as head of creative, and apparently TNA is bringing Dave Lagana for something. It's like a lot of stuff's ending at this pay per view. Um, the first thing I actually want to talk about is not having to do with the pay per view as much as something I've been doing myself. Uh, for most of this year, I've been doing a series of videos called After Immortal. Uh, talking about all the different storylines and suggestions for storylines that TNA could do once the Immortal storyline is over. And I figure it's time for that story, that series to come to an end because I fully expect that the Immortal storyline will come to an end tomorrow night at Bound for Glory. It's tomorrow, well, tomorrow morning for here. It'll be either tonight or tomorrow night if you're in the U.S. I'm not sure about the time difference. But here it's Sunday night now. So it'll be morning, Monday morning when I'm watching the pay-per-view. And, um... You know, I had fun doing that series. It was good to, you know, flex my creative muscle. And I hope to do more, like, fantasy booking type videos in the future. I'll need a new title. Because when Immortal's over, I really can't do the After Immortal series of videos. But, you know, this was a an angle that ran for a full year. It didn't quite go as the way they planned it with, you know, everything that happened with people leaving and the Jeff Hardy situation. A lot of things went different. But, all in all, I think it's going to end pretty good. You know, I like the card for the Bound for Glory pay-per-view. And I think it's going to be a very good one. But, you know... Let me stop talking about myself and let's get to this pay-per-view. <clears throat> now, for the pre-show, which will be air live. Uh, apparently, it's going to be on Facebook. I'll probably check it out on TNA On Demand, but the live pre-show will have a match. And it will be the Tag Team Championship match. It will be uh, Champions Mexican America defending against Ink Inc. Uh, I think this is a match a lot of people wanted to see. They already brought in Christina Von Erie as part of this thing. So, 
you know, I, I as one of my after mortal videos, the other ones I did one called Guys and Dolls, where I talked about this exact feud of Mexican American Ink Ink Christina Von Eri coming in. Everybody's here it, all, here in TNA. The only person left to complete the story the story is, is Buggy. If TNA brings in Buggy, the team with Christina Von Eri, the whole thing that I had planned out is ready to go. But with Mexican America getting the belts just so recently, I don't see them losing. I think. Christina will be able to keep Sarita and Rosita at bay, but with two of them and only one of her, they she might not be able to keep them from interfering completely. <laughs> Either way, um, I can see this storyline going a lot longer, and I hope it does go longer. <coughs> Excuse my cough there. I'd like to see these two teams be the centerpiece of the tag team division for a little while. You know, um, the British Invasion is still there. Machine Guns should be back in a couple of months now. I think Saban's supposed to be able to return in January or February. Hopefully, there's some a couple of new teams they can put together to, to you know refresh the tag team division. But, but since they won the belt so soon, I don't see them losing it. I see Mexican America retaining, but you know, I think after the match. Ink Ink will get the beat down after the match and they'll leave standing tall, but Mexican America will leave still the champions. Maybe Ink Ink wins by a DQ. The point is, the belts aren't changing hands. Not tonight. I can see Ink Ink getting them in the next couple of months, but Bound for Glory, I don't think Bound for Glory will be there tonight. But I expect the match to be fun, though. I'm interested in seeing what the girls do in this match. I think we'll get some good stuff out of there. Um, I'm actually altering the volume on this, so if the video suddenly just got a lot louder, I apologize. I'm still getting used to this new mic I just got. Anyway, let's move on to the next match. Full Metal Mayhem, Rob Van Dam versus Jerry Lynn. It's a Rob Van Dam match. I don't really care. I mean, I like Jerry Lynn, but eh, he hasn't been relevant in years. Uh, it's Philly, so they're giving him an old uh, ECW style match. I, I, I don't really care about this match at all. RVD wins it. Let's move on. Triple Threat match. Samoa Joe versus Crimson versus Matt Morgan. This is a weird match. It's hard to predict who's going to win because all three guys need to win. Matt Morgan had a couple of loss, big, big losses. And I want he, he needs to be kept relevant if he's going to stay in the main event title picture. You know, Crimson's still undefeated, so you don't want him to lose. And Samoa Joe has, has lost a lot of matches recently. He needs this big win more than anybody. So, I, I, I'm going to have to... I, I can't see Crimson getting beaten because I think they want to keep his undefeated streak going. And if he doesn't get pinned, they still can call him undefeated. They used to do it with Samoa Joe in the past. So, with this match, I am going to pick Samoa Joe to win. He's going to have... Joe will make Matt Morgan tap out. Or pin Matt Morgan. But I don't see Crimson being the one getting pinned. But I'm going to pick Samoa Joe to win. Uh, knockouts Championship match. We've got a four-way winter defending against Madison Rain, Velvet Sky, and Mickey James. It seems like they've been building towards Velvet Sky winning this title. And I I, I, I think it's a, long, it's, 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 it's a long time coming. I think she is clearly the most popular and the most marketable knockout. I think she's the person that everybody wants to get behind. I I can't see any reason why she shouldn't win. Unless it's a big screw job. But, you know, uh, if Karen Jarrett stays the head of the knockouts division after Bound for Glory, <laughs> they could do like a old school Austin McMahon thing with, you know, just Karen throwing everything at Velvet to get the belt off of her. Or if Karen isn't in charge anymore, say Dixie gets the company back, she fires Karen. Karen could always come back as a manager. I talked about bringing Karen in as a manager before. She could just start managing people and just manage people and throw them at Velvet. It could be Velvet Sky Feud with Karen Jarrett, but Karen never wrestles. Whoever Karen's managing wrestles. You know, it's kind of like how, how you always want, it'd be kind of like how, you know, Bobby Heenan would feud with wrestlers, but he wasn't a wrestler, he was a manager. So his wrestlers would just wrestle some matches, but you always want to see the baby face get Bobby Heenan on in the ring and, you know, not Bobby Heenan out one time and he would always manage to get away, be the weasel. 
you know, I think they could get away with something like that. It's an old school thing, but it still works. Just every time Karen, uh, Velvet's close to getting her hands on Karen, Karen runs and screams like a little baby. And Velvet's got beats up whatever, the, whatever heel Karen's throwing at her. But I'm going to pick Velvet's guy to win and be the new Knockouts champion. Falls Count Anywhere match. Bully Ray versus Mr. Anderson. Um, Falls Count Anywhere match is always fun. That means they can get hardcore. They can go all over the building. Again, I think it's more that Philadelphia thing, that Philadelphia ECW thing. They want to give them some hardcore matches where they just go all over the building and beat the crap out of each other. Um... I'm still seeing this pay-per-view as a culmination pay-per-view. If Bully Ray wins, this feud isn't over. If Anderson wins, you can end it. So I'm going to pick Anderson to win. X Division Championship, Austin Aries versus Brian Kendrick. Should be a fun X Division match. Um, Aries won the belt at the last pay-per-view. I can't see him losing it at this one. Of course, TNA has been known to do that kind of thing. I, 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 they've done stuff like that before where they take the bet off a guy just to have him win it right back. They want to have Brian Kendrick win the title at this pay-per-view. I can see them doing it. I don't think it would be a good idea. I'd rather see the belt on Austin Aries for a while, have him have a good extended run with the title. <laughs> I think there's more potential with him, so I'm going to say I hope and am picking Austin Aries to retain. AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels in an I Quit match. It's bound for glory. It's AJ Styles. I can't see him losing. I don't think he's ever lost a bound for glory match. Somebody check this out. If you could, has AJ Styles ever lost a match at bound for glory? Um, I think this will conclude their feud. There's still other things Daniels can do in the future. I've actually got a couple ideas in my own head, but I'm not going to talk about those right now, maybe in a future video. But I expect the match to be a very fun They'll have some really good wrestling going in the ring. They'll go for a lot of good, do a lot of good submission stuff. Then they'll, you know, bring out some weapons and go at it for a little while. But in the end, I'm picking AJ Styles to win. Daniels will say I quit. Uh, Hulk Hogan versus Sting. And this match, as they say, is for control of the company. That if... Now, they said on Impact at the beginning, Mike Tanay said it was career versus the company. Apparently playing it up as if Sting loses, he'll retire, but I'm not sure how they're going to go with it. But it's all set, so it's hard to say. However, either way, even though I'm not completely clear on whatever the stipulation is, um, I'm picking Sting to win, because that's how you end the Immortal storyline, is with Sting winning. So... They're building this as a fight. It had to be because Hogan, you know, he can't really wrestle, wrestle anymore because of his back injuries. But, you know, they can have a good, fun little brawl over the building, you know, hit each other with some chairs, throw a lot of punches and kicking. But there'll probably be some interference, a lot of interference in this match. But in the end, uh, Sting will pick up the win. And that'll be the end of Immortal. Dixie Heads are coming back. All is right with the world. And everything will be set just fine. For our main event, which will be for the World Heavyweight Championship. Champion Kurt Angle will defend against Robert Roode. Everything that they have done building to this pay-per-view says that Robert Roode is going to win. Everything from the Bound for Glory series to turning Kurt Angle heel to having... And in the five episodes of Impact leading into Bound for Glory, Rude wrestled in f on four of those episodes. Angle wrestled on one. They made him fight his friends. They beat him down towards the end. And everything says that Rude's gonna win. But I and I want and I think everybody wants Rude to win. Everybody I've come across seems to want Bobby Rude to win. I think you're going to have a lot of angry fans if Rude doesn't get this belt. And I think it would be the right move. I think that Kurt Angle doesn't need the belt. I think there's a lot of new things for Kurt Angle to do. If Kurt wants to take some time off, he's had a very busy year in the company. If he's really serious about going for the Olympics again, he'll need time off the train. I think everything for the future of this company is, will work with Rude as champion. And I think there's plenty of really good storylines you can do with Rude as champion. Him defending the belt against the members of Fortune. Build up to that eventual uh, James Storm match that 
pretty much everybody wants to see. Um, Samoa Joe, Matt Morgan, possibly Crimson. Him ending Crimson's undefeated streak could be a, a really good thing. You know, uh, champion versus undefeated challenger. That's a that's a big thing you could go with. I think if they get that television title off of Eric Young and let James Storm run with it for a while, get that belt on James Storm, and let those two run with that belt, and like five, six months down the line, say Slammiversary, you have Robert Roode versus James Storm, t- champion versus champion, I think you could do some really good stuff with that. I'd I like to see that. I think everything they have done says that Robert Roode is going to win. I think every fan wants Robert Roode to win. I think there's a lot more fresh storylines, fresh feuds, and ideas that TNA, to, that TNA can do if Robert Roode wins. And yet, I don't want to just say I'm certain. There's still a part of me that thinks Angle could retain. But, I'm going to just sort of go with my heart on this one. I'm picking Robert Roode. I want Robert Roode to win. I want to see him as champion, and I'm hoping that that's what happens. So that is nine matches for this pay per view. Every match got some got good build up behind it. Every match got some decent storyline behind it. Um, I am interested in seeing all the matches except one. Uh, again, I don't really give a crap about RVD and Jerry Lynn. I don't even know why it's on the show. <laughs> every other match I'm interested in. Every other match I want to see. I am looking very much forward to this pay per view, and I hope that it is a great show. Uh, I'll be back after the pay-per-view to talk about uh, my thoughts on the show and where we go from here. This is the Shadow Ranger. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.